Despite having more than twice the cards of Shrouded Fable, Stellar Crown isn't that much better of a set. Like ripping off someone's sock but only exposing two toes, the Pokemon Company basically decided to take a full set, remove 64 of the cards, and create Shrouded Fable because more sets equals more money. As a result, Stellar Crown features such amazing cards like alternate art versions of the Blastoise EX and Venusaur EX from 151, unplayable EXs like Greninja EX and Lucario, and useless cards like this Reshiram all in an effort to pad out the set size. If you're wondering how Stellar Crown can be so bad, it's because a lot of the cards are leftovers from Japan's Battle Academy and Starter Decks, products designed for new players featuring cards that lack good attacks and abilities. Thankfully, even with so much Garb Odor, there's still some good cards coming in Stellar Crown, which releases on September 12th in Pokemon TCG Live. And that's where I'll start this video, with the top 10 best cards coming in our next set. First up, we have Area Zero Underdepth, the best card in Stellar Crown. This new stadium is like Skyfield from back in the day, allowing both players to have up to 8 bench Pokemon in play, provided they have a Terra Pokemon on their side of the field. All of the Ogre Pawn EX, the new Terrapagos EX, Charizard EX, Dragapult EX, and much more are Terra Pokemon, so fulfilling that requirement isn't difficult. With Area Zero, Palkia V-Star and Zoroark V-Star become viable options again, as they both take advantage of the extra bench Pokemon. Or you can just use it in a normal deck, expanding your bench to help with your setup, then bump Area Zero defensively to quickly get rid of all non-essential Pokemon like Rotom V and Squawkabilly EX, leaving only your best Pokemon on the field. You know how we've had item-based energy acceleration cards in the past like Dark Patch, Aqua Patch, and Metal Saucer? Yeah, Glass Trumpet is that, except doubled. As long as you have a Terra Pokemon in play, Glass Trumpet attaches a basic energy from your discard pile to up to two of your colorless Pokemon. Blissey EX can play Glass Trumpet beautifully, attaching two energy to itself, then move that energy wherever it wants with its ability. Terrapagos EX also benefits mightily from Glass Trumpet, able to use its second attack without too much hassle. And don't be afraid to get crazy with Glass Trumpet and Energy Switch, the same way Teal Mask Ogre Pony X and Regidrago V-Star get freaky when nobody's watching. Even though Briar is the third best card in Stellar Crown, I'm not exactly excited for it. That's because it basically turns Charizard EX into ADP. If your opponent has exactly two prize cards remaining, you can play Briar. Then if you take a KO by damage with a Terra Pokemon, you get an extra prize card. So yes, prize card manipulation is back, making the best decks even better. In fairness, Briar makes every Terra Pokemon EX better, especially Teal Mask Ogre Pawn EX. But the fact that Pidgeot EX is most commonly paired with Charizard EX, allowing you to find Briar on that pivotal turn, Charizard is the best partner. Add on to that fact that you can use Dustclops or Dustnoir to force your opponent down to two prize cards whenever you want, now it's nigh unstoppable. We all underestimated the power of Shady Dealings, Drizzile, and Intellion when they first released, but by the time they rotated out of standard, both were heavily played. So I'm giving the number 4 spot to Noctowl. As long as you have a Terra Pokemon in play, when you evolve into Noctowl, you can grab any two trainer cards from your deck, whether that be a supporter, item, tool, or stadium. Most commonly, you'll pair Noctowl with Terrapagos EX, but you can also use it with any of the Ogre Pond, or even Charizard or Dragapult if you're crazy. And you don't have to worry about Noctowl taking up too much bench space, because you can just drop an Area Zero down after grabbing it with Noctowl's ability. Not that there's much competition, the best new ace spec coming in Stellar Crown, Sparkling Crystal reduces the attack cost of the Terra Pokemon it's attached to by one of any type of energy. Dragapult EX has the best use for this, meaning you only have to attach either a Fire or Psychic Energy to use Phantom Dive. And since it's a tool, Sparkling Crystal is Arvin searchable. Uh, unless you prize it. Then that's when you blame PDCGL for screwing you over and concede immediately. But that Arvin ability is why you'd want to run it over Neo Upper Energy. Though, you could make a case that Colrus's tenacity with Neo Upper Energy is a better strategy. No, I, I won't change my mind. Sparkling Crystal's good, and it works well with Dragapult EX, but you could also put it on something like Greninja EX to either attack for free or use Mirage Barrage for just a double turbo. A card that's performed better than I expected in Japan, Crispin grabs two basic energy of different types from your deck. You attach one to one of your Pokemon, then put the other into your hand. While you can use Crispin with something like Blissey EX or Arceus V-Star, the strongest partner is Regidrago V-Star. This way you can accelerate a Fire Energy, then either manually attach a Grass Energy to Regidrago, or use Ogre Pond's ability to attach that Grass Energy and draw a card. Our old friend Dragapult EX can also take advantage of Crispin, same with Raging Bolt EX. Basically, if a deck plays two or more different types of energy, chuck in Crispin, and now you have a way to easily accelerate energy into play. It's always hard placing the attacking Pokemon on lists like these when they aren't immediately going to be tier 1. 
Terrapago CX is a good card, but the deck might not be higher than B tier when Stellar Crown launches. Still, with Area Zero in play and a full bench, Terrapago can deal 240 damage for 2 colorless energy. 2 energy you can get on it easily with Glass Trumpet if you want to forego double turbo. Then there's the second attack, Crown Opal, which has nothing to do with that old lady gym leader. If you get a Grass Water and Lightning Energy on Terrapagos, it deals 180 damage, and makes itself immune to damage from basic non-colorless Pokemon like Raging Bolt EX, Radiant Charizard, Drifloon, Screamtail, Ogre Pony EX, Roaring Moon, and so much more. Depending on the matchup, you could win with just a single Terrapagos EX and Crown Opal. While Terrapagos is better all around, I prefer Hydrapple EX due to how simple it is. Get a lot of Grass Energy in play, take big knockouts, that's it. No dealing with different types of energy, you just drop 4 Ogre Pawn EX down, use its ability to accelerate energy and draw cards. Then on turn 2, you get a Hydrapple EX into play, accelerate more energy into play, and deal 300 or more damage. Plus, who doesn't want to cover their opponent in a Syrup Storm multiple times per game? Yes, I know it's cheating, but I didn't want to give the final two spots to two cards that go together better than Ranch Dressing and Toes, so I combined them. Solely during your first turn of the game, you can use Fan Rotom's ability, which gets any three colorless Pokemon from your deck with 100 hit points or less and puts them into your hand. Hoot Hoot and Noctowl will both fit that bill, same with the new Bufalant. If you have two Bufalant in play, all of your basic colorless Pokemon take 60 less damage from attacks. Terrapagos EX takes the most advantage of this ability, effectively giving it 290 hit points and making it that much tougher to knock out. So yeah, thanks to cards like Glass Trumpet and Bufalon, colorless decks get some really good support with Stellar Crown. For my 10th pick, I'm going with something unexpected, Gravity Stone. Actually, since that's the card you're looking at on screen, you are expecting it. So instead I'll pick Joltik. Yes, it's extremely weak with just 30 hit points, but I mean come on, look at that attack. For a single colorless energy, Joltik grabs 2 grass energy and 2 lightning energy from your deck, then attaches them to your Pokemon however you want. So now Raging Bolt EX has a way to put 4 energy into play turn 1 going 2nd if they don't have a great early attack with Bellowing Thunder, or if they don't want a Burst Roar. Joltik also opens up the possibility of making a big Teal Mask Ogre Pawn EX, making it easier to one-shot a Charizard EX, and the option of using that Ogre Pawn plus Briar to take an extra prize card on that pivotal turn. Oh, and don't forget that Joltik evolves into Galvantula EX, which I'll cover in a second. The beauty of the foot is the toes. And the beauty of a set filled with so many unplayable cards is that the crafting cost in Pokemon TCG Live will be far lower than it has any right to be. Since Stellar Crown is so disappointing, I decided to combine my top 10 best cards video with my PDCGL crafting guide. You're welcome, foot soldiers! Starting with the trainers, I covered all the best ones in my top 10. From those, you want 4 Area Zero Underpants, 4 Glass Trumpet, 1 Briar, and 2 Crispin. They should all be just 100 credits each to craft, as 99% of trainers in Standard are all uncommons. Outside my top 10, the other trainers you want to have in your collection are 2 Pyapa Berry. This is more of a speculative choice. If Gardevoir EX manages to stay near the top of the best decks in Standard, the Pyapa Berry reduces the damage a Psychic type like Drifloon deals by 60, meaning your Charizard EX will survive. The Aka Berry is less useful, reducing the damage a Fire Pokemon deals by 60, but keep it in mind if a Fire deck ever becomes the BDIF over the next couple of years. And don't forget about Gravity Stone, which I kinda skipped over. If it's attached to your active Pokemon, both active Pokemon's retreat costs are increased by 1. You might think it only pairs with Spydops EX, but Gardevoir EX players in Japan have been using it, presumably paired with Streamtail to snipe and trap. Lastly, there's Great Tree. An A spec, which means at 600 credits, it's worth owning. Maybe not right away, but Great Tree allows you to take a basic Pokemon and warp Digivolve it into a Stage 2 Pokemon. You will have to wait a turn before you can evolve that basic, but being able to get a stage 2 into play without needing rare candy cannot be overlooked. The trainers you can skip in Stellar Crown are both of the fossils. Yes, there is a rogue deck with Cray Dilly and Dangerous Laser, but unless you're scraping the bottom of the barrel for deck ideas, they aren't worth it. Same with Deluxe Bomb. It's not a bad card, putting 12 damage counters on anyone that damages the Pokemon it's attached to. But there's at least 6 or 7 A specs you should put in your deck before thinking about Deluxe Bomb, including Sparkling Crystal and Great Tree. Lacey and Kofu are two more trainers to ignore. Lacey could be good once Roxanne rotates early next year, drawing you up to 8 cards if your opponent has 3 or less prize cards remaining. But since it doesn't affect your opponent's hand, Roxanne is just better. And Kofu's kinda terrible. Unless you really want to build the Kerbomitable Veluza deck, it's not worth going out of your way to craft. So yeah, there's a measly 8 trainers worth owning from Stellar Crown. 
Remember when I said the set sucks? Well, it actually gets worse. When it comes to the support Pokemon in Stellar Crown, there's just four, and I've covered all of them already. So this section is very simple. Get yourself a 4-4 line of Hootoot and Noctowl, 3 Bufalant, 2 Fan Rotom, and 4 Joltik, and you're all set. It looks like Hootoot, Fan Rotom, and Joltik will be commons, Bufalant will be an uncommon, and Noctowl might be a rare if the Japanese version is anything to go by. We'll have to wait until closer to September 12th to know the actual rarities of Stellar Crown cards, but it'll likely cost 2400 credits to craft all of the support Pokemon. If Noctowl ends up being an uncommon though, it's down to just 1200 credits. And now we come to the moment you've all been waiting for. No, PDCGL doesn't have a way to track wins and losses for each individual deck. It's the attacking Pokemon. I've already covered Terrapago CX, which is an easy recommendation for four copies. EX Pokemon cost 600 credits each to craft, so set aside 2400 credits for them. Though I'd wager Terrapagos has an overwhelmingly high chance of being one of the free decks on the Battle Pass. As for Hydrapple, you'll want 3 copies of the EX, 4 copies of the Applin, and 1 copy of the Diplin because it walls basic Pokemon for a grand total of 2000 credits. Sticking with another Stage 2 EX, we have Cinderace EX. It's just good enough to warrant crafting, and like Hydrapple, you'll want 3 of the EX, 4 Store Bunny, and 1 Raboot. Cinderace's second attack, Garnet Volley, is fine, sniping 180 damage, but it requires three different types of energy like all stellar Pokemon do for their second attack. The first attack is what makes Cinderace playable. For a fire and two colorless, it does 280 damage. Use Magma Basin and attach a double turbo, now it's 260 and easily powered up. Or get three basic energy on it, attach a maximum belt, and now you're one-shotting a Charizard EX. And don't forget that it can use Briar, potentially taking three prizes to win a tough game. Galvantula EX is the third and final new Stellar Terra Pokemon we're crafting in Stellar Crown. If you haven't watched my previous video about Galvantula, I will admit that I was wrong. Pairing it with Glass Trumpet and Blissey EX allows you to loop Fulgurite, dealing 180 damage and shutting off their items for several turns in a row. Or you can put a couple of Galvantula into a Raging Bolt or Maridon EX deck, giving you a way to get around Noivern EX and Terrapagos EX, as it's an evolution Pokemon without an ability. Probably the attacker I'm most excited for from Stellar Crown is Marowak. At first glance, it's mid. Then you realize you can pair it with the 151 Cubone, and all of a sudden, Boner Revenge goes from 180 damage to 270 if there's 3 Cubone on the bench. Yeah, 270 on a Stage 1 single prizer is kind of insane. And being able to hit for a Fighting Weakness with Terrapido CX set to be a strong deck means you have a nice budget option. For the last attackers worth getting from Stellar Crown, we have Raging Bolt and Zero Aura. The new Baby Bolt can easily deal with Mimikyu while also sniping some damage to the bench if you came up short on a KO. The new Zero Aura, meanwhile, gives Lightning Dex an easy way to deal with Palkia V-Star on a single prizer, as it does 20 damage plus 20 more for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So if they've filled it up all the way to 8, you're dealing 180 damage before weakness is applied. Because Stellar Crown has such few good options for new cards, I've deluded myself into thinking that some of these are at least worth thinking about. To be fair, rogue decks like Craigdilly and Crabominable have been minor successes in Japan, and Dreadnought could be fun, same with Slowking, and Daxbun EX has embarked on a journey to Greninja EX decks. To quickly cover some of the leftover cards, Craigdilly can put any status condition on your opponent's active, though it is a coin flip. It can be its own attacker, or you can pair it with Electrode V and Dangerous Laser to deal some fairly decent damage. Crabominable and Veluza are the only reason to play Kofu. If you have 4 Kofu in your discard pile, Kerbominable does 250 damage for a single water energy. And Veluza can deal 110 damage for free. Dreadnought has big meme potential. If it would be dealt 200 damage or more, that damage is prevented. So Dragapult EX is screwed, same with Charizard EX once it takes a prize card. Slowking, meanwhile, opens up the possibilities for a lot of fun. If you discard something like Conkeldur from the top of your deck with Inspiring Challenge, it does 250 damage for 2 energy. Or pair it with Gardevoir EX, copy Onyx's Raging Swing, and you're doing 400 damage with regularity. As for Daxbun EX, it's a Cheryl in dog form. When you evolve into Daxbun, you can heal all damage from all of your evolution Pokemon at the cost of losing all their energy. Palafin EX and Greninja EX, who attack for a single energy, can use this well, but that's about it. Continuing on the EX side of things, Lapras EX is a worse Chen Pao EX with a funny secondary attack. Metacham EX has potential with Dusclops, but I'm thinking it's not as good as Zarina EX. And Orthworm EX is just a worse Heatran. For more rapid fire leftovers, Chargebug is a must if you ever want to play a Vikavolt deck. Driftblim could be a thing if you manage to put it directly into play without the need for Drifloon. Comfey can screw over stall decks, and Iron Boulder is kind of just a worse Maridon. 
In total, you'll want to set aside approximately 14,000 credits to craft all of the good cards coming to Pokemon TCG Live on September 12th in Stellar Crown. We'll have to wait until the first week of September to find out what our two new free decks on the Battle Pass will be, but expect at least a few of the best cards to be included in them, driving down the overall cost, likely by several thousand credits. Closer to the launch of Stellar Crown, I'll put a list in the description that you can easily copy and paste into live, making the crafting process that much easier. What Stellar Crown cards are you most excited for? Let everyone know in the comments.